Hello, this is Worldwide Geography, a channel all about geography. FIFA, a non-profit organization, is making money behind our backs. Soccer is the most watched sport in the world, so the FIFA World Cup takes the world by storm every four years. However, no matter who wins or loses on the field, FIFA is the only final winner. Although FIFA declared itself a non-profit organization, it made more than 4.5 billion U.S. dollars through one World Cup, and the 2022 Qatar World Cup-related commercial contracts are even worth 7.5 billion U.S. dollars. However, there are many hidden details behind the high amount of money, such as the heavy struggles between different funds and powers in the Qatar World Cup. The Qatar World Cup has been regarded as one of the most controversial, with a poor performance in human rights that don't even fit the image of the World Cup, and more importantly, a flawed process to qualify as a host country. On December 2, 2010, the 22 members of the FIFA Executive Committee met in Zurich, Switzerland, to decide the hosting country for the 2022 World Cup. In the end, Qatar won the hosting right over the United States, Japan, Korea, and Australia. However, the British media soon revealed the shady tactics of Qatar. On the surface, its official bid team negotiated with FIFA through formal channels, but under the surface, they tried every means to buy off the executive committee officials. During the verification process, reporters also filmed the executive committee revealing the price offered by the bidders, which made people doubt that bribery isn't an exception in FIFA, but an unwritten rule. Once the news broke, FIFA immediately launched an investigation to clear itself and issued a report saying there was no solid evidence to suggest Qatar had bought votes. However, they then faced a more powerful questioner. The U.S. Department of Justice filed a formal indictment accusing Russia, the 2018 World Cup host in Qatar, the 2022 World Cup host of buying their way into hosting the tournament. The indictment stated that the former Brazilian Football Confederation, CBF, President and the former South American Football Confederation, President accepted a bribe of 3.7 million U.S. dollars and promised Qatar the hosting right of the 2022 World Cup. The former President of the Confederation of North, Central America and Caribbean Association Football, CONCACAF, was also accused of receiving 5 million U.S. dollars for voting for Russia as the host country of the 2018 World Cup. FIFA and Qatar, of course, strongly denied the U.S. indictment. It was difficult to get to the bottom of this because the related international laws were very complicated and too many people were involved in this case. However, the real controversy was yet to come. Former FIFA president Sepp Blatter suddenly revealed in a media interview in 2022 that the United States was supposed to be the host country of the 2022 World Cup and the French government had something to do with Qatar winning the hosting right. As Blatter was the FIFA president in 2010 and was aware of everything in deciding Qatar as the host country, many people started to pay attention to this and found out the scandal behind it. According to Blatter's interview and investigations by several French media, FIFA believed that the United States had much experience in hosting the World Cup and a sound infrastructure that would meet FIFA's financial interests. However, just a few days before the voting day, the then UEFA president Michael Platini was invited to dinner at the LSE Palace, the official residence of the French president. Platini was joined at the table by Nicolas Sarkozy, then president of France, and Tamim bin Hamad al Thani, crown prince of Qatar. After dinner, Platini called Blatter and told him something extremely shocking. He said that the French president asked FIFA to consider the interests of France and that the FIFA committee wasn't just voting for the host country of the World Cup, but also the next French president. Platini and Sarkozy denied this, but Blatter and French media further revealed that Sarkozy pressured Platini to influence the voting intentions of other European executive committee members. Meanwhile, the United States didn't know any of this and was sure it would have no problem winning the hosting right. Why did France intervene in the hosting rights dispute between Qatar and the United States? According to the French media, Sarkozy was willing to help Qatar on the condition that Qatar purchases French military systems, which would bring France much more than the millions of dollars in bribes. Whatever the truth is, the controversy over the Qatar World Cup shows that FIFA deals with more than just football. 
It also has to consider the benefits between political leaders, huge funds, and even national defense policies. As for how the great soccer match ended up a scandal, it had something to do with the problems in FIFA's operation. FIFA was founded in 1904 with seven founding members, Belgium, Denmark, France, the Netherlands, Spain, Sweden, and Switzerland. In the beginning, the organization aimed to promote football around the world. Therefore, FIFA has worked hard to help countries create soccer federations and to create a worldwide standard of competition. After all those years, the FIFA World Cup has become an international tournament as important as the Olympic Games, creating increasingly amazing benefits. Some experts describe FIFA's business model like this. Business is simple. If you want to make money, just create a product that everyone wants, but costs almost nothing. For example, FIFA spent 7.5 billion US dollars on the 2022 Qatar World Cup, including 440 million US dollars in prize money and 1.5 million dollars per team to prepare for the tournament. However, the commercial contracts related to the World Cup amounted to 7.5 billion US dollars. Let's take a closer look at what FIFA made its money from. First of all, FIFA earned half of its income from selling broadcasting rights, which all TV stations would fight to get because of the high ratings of the World Cup. Fox, for example, spent 400 million US dollars to broadcast the World Cup, and Facebook and Twitter also spent millions of dollars for the rights to show highlights. The second is advertising revenues. Billions of people watch the World Cup, so brands pay high sums of money just to get their products on the air. The third is tourism revenue from ticket sales and accommodation. During the 2018 World Cup in Russia, more than 10 million tickets were sold, with 100% of the revenue going to FIFA. There are also other ways for FIFA to make money besides matches, the most important of which is the trademark license. For example, they charge EA Sports a copyright fee of 150 million US dollars for this company to launch football video games. All right, that's all for this video on worldwide geography. If you're interested in this topic, please comment and share your views. If you like our channel, please subscribe, like, and share. See you in the next video. Bye.